Good morning. Now, it might not look like it, but this is actually, technically, part one of a Jeff Buys Cars and a MacMaster Challenge. Many of you suggested in comments on various videos what we should do for our next EV versus ICE internal combustion road trip. And we've chosen a route. So today I'm starting on the outward journey to go and meet Lee tonight so that we can start fresh as daisies in the morning to do our challenge. Now the route that we've chosen is east to west and the day that we've chosen to do it is it was meant to be the shortest day of the year but due to a scheduling issue um, the shortest day of the year couldn't happen on the day that we were both available to do it however that's played into our hands because we're doing it on the day that is forecast to be the worst day for driving in the world we will be driving from the furthest east point in, I don't even know, I think it's Norfolk. Um, next point, basically, all the way to, the plan is to get to a lighthouse in just outside St. David's in Pembrokeshire. Now, the big question, and this is the big question, is what car am I going to be using for the challenge? And this is a question that I've been asking myself since we set the date. The problem that I have is I currently own six cars and for various reasons, well, I'll talk you through it. I own a 1969 Renault 10, that's car number one. Uh, that is basically my EV, i.e. I only use it for local journeys that don't matter because if I want to rely on that car to take me long distances, I just can't be sure that it's gonna give me a hassle-free journey. So I'm not using that. My Renault 11, the second car, uh, as you well know from the video that I posted, is broken and has gone away with a man to have the rear suspension fixed. I really wanted to do the trip in that car, but due to time and garage availability and many other factors, not happening. I then own three Volvos. My Red Volvo 850 TDI is still off the road with no MOT, needs a little bit of work to the rear axle and it's not boosting. So I've I've sawned that car, I've declared it off the road, I've parked it up and I will deal with that in the spring because I've got bored of spending money on it. And I'm sort of sulking about the fact that I've thrown loads and loads of money at it and it's still broken. I have the race car, which has no interior, doesn't really have any proper heaters, it's incredibly noisy for filming, but would have worked quite well for the trip. However, it's currently on my brother's driveway, somewhere up near Cannock Chase, and it's not, there's two things on that. One, I'm not really up for driving that, because it's 800 miles across a couple of days with the, tri with the trip out and then the trip back. And it's noisy and it's very drafty and it gets very cold and I've removed everything inside so there's no stereo or anything like that and I do want to enjoy this trip so that kind of marks the race car out but it was my backup plan then we have this car this is my Volvo 850 2.5 10 valve automatic beautiful gold car with a beige interior I bought this car to do the trip in the problem was I had this car uh, delivered, the gentleman delivered it to me on the Tuesday before the Wednesday that I did the track day. Sorry for the long video. I did the track day on the Wednesday, and then on the Thursday, when I was very tired and sleepy, I drove this car for the first time out to go and see Mr. Banganomics himself, and I made that video inside the car. You probably remember, it was a great video. He was about an hour and a half, two hours from me, so it was my first road trip in the car. And on that road trip, I was thinking, this car is so comfortable, this car is so comfortable. I'm starting to get a little bit sleepy. And I was getting sleepy in the cabin. I thought, that's odd, I never get sleepy in a car. Maybe it's because I'm really tired from the track day. Maybe it's just because the car is so com comfortable. Or, maybe it's the beginnings of carbon monoxide poisoning. And the longer I drove the car, the more I realized that there was a faint smell of exhaust gases wafting into the cabin. That presented a bit of a problem. The trip was looming and I was running out of time and I was desperate to use this car for the trip because it's so comfortable and I genuinely love it. It's a very, very nice car. Uh, and I wanted to do my 100,000 subscriber big road trip in a Volvo. It just felt right to do it in a Volvo. So 
Uh, I phoned a garage and they said no, we're too busy. And then I phoned another garage and they said no, we're too busy. And eventually I had a big moan and a bit of a breakdown to the wife and I said, I just want to use my Volvo, but nobody can fix my Volvo. I don't know what to do. And she booked it in with another garage that was more local. And I dropped it there on Monday, which was two days ago. They then phoned me and said, I think you need to come down to the garage. And I went down to the garage and they said, we don't really advise that you use this car for your road trip because we found a crack on the exhaust manifold at the point where all five exhaust pipes that come from the cylinders meet together to form one big pipe. There's a crack there. And I basically thought, can't we just fill that full of exhaust paste and make it work? And then two people said to me, no, there's far too much pressure and you don't want to risk exhaust gases coming into the cabin for 800 miles. So, I put on my big boy pants and I said, it's not going to work. I can't use this car for that road trip because I don't want to do 800 miles with the window open and I don't want to do 800 miles getting sleepy. So, Tuesday, bearing in mind it's Wednesday today and my trip has started, Tuesday I started shopping for a car. <laughs> so yet again, another Jeff Buys Cars and Mac Master Challenge begins in total chaos. Because right now, I've got my suitcase in the boot and I'm on my way to a train station. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am beginning the challenge on a train. So there we have it. Um, I looked at a number of cars yesterday on Auto Trader and on Facebook Marketplace. There was a lovely little Fiesta, just like the one that I own, um, but that was uh, sold. There was a Lexus GS300, which looked, the price was right and the location was right, but I just mm, couldn't get into it. I was offered a BMW E39 M5 to use. I was also offered an Aston Martin DB something, the little one. Um, but just not very Jeff. Yes, it would be lovely to do 800 miles in an M5. Yes, it would be lovely to do 800 miles in an Aston Martin. But it's just not very me, is it? So it had to be a Volvo or it had to be something cheap. But not only that, as you know from watching these challenges before, it had to be something that is cool. It's got to look good. It's got to be a bargain. It's ideally got to be another high mile hero. Uh, and I want it to be comfortable. I mean, of course, I dream of things like heated seats and a sunroof and a premium sound system uh, and a nice, enjoyable engine and a little bit of power and about 40 miles to the gallon. But when you're shopping for a car, for a YouTube challenge on a budget against the clock, you can't have it all. I haven't managed to get it all, but I have absolutely managed to get something. So there we go. That is part one of the Mac Master Challenge video. I'm going to now jump on my train and go collect my car. And you will see the full video of our east to west internal combustion engine versus electric car challenge video on Boxing Day at 8 p.m. That's the plan anyway, unless editing goes out the window or something happens which I don't know at this stage, but it's gonna be interesting. Worst day of the year for travel, and allegedly gonna be the worst day of the year for charging. Lee's gonna need one charge. There will be a pre-trip chat after this video goes out because I'm meeting Lee at the hotel tonight. So we'll do our pre-trip chat and you'll learn a little bit more about the route and, and the plan. Uh, but essentially, that's where we're at. I'm gonna jump on my train and I'll see you for another video very soon. I think this is going to end up being a sort of five-part series like the John O'Groats one was. So, one day, east to west, who's going to get there first? Are we both going to get there? Is my car going to be a, an actual crock? Um, have, is it a risk too far doing this just before Christmas? And Am I going to ruin Christmas and not actually be there? <laughs> my wife is livid that we're doing this three days before Christmas. But, if you haven't got a bit of chaos in your life, what have you got? Thanks for watching. Hey, look at it, it's rather beautiful. It's got winter tires on it and everything. Lovely beige interior. All right, it's a little bit of rust on the bottom of the door. Lovely beige interior, only 100,000 miles, but leaking exhausts into the cabin and making me sleepy means I must go get my train. All right, let's go for a walk. All right, the other obvious question that I haven't answered that I know you're all thinking, um, why aren't I using the three series that I used for the John O'Groats challenge? I've still got that car, but, I did say on a video, 
I never want to use the same car twice for a challenge. I just feel like that's been done. And then I messaged my friend Steve, who I've had a few cars off in the past, and I said to him, I'm thinking about doing my YouTube challenge in the 3 Series. And he said, nah, I'm not watching that. Seen it all before, not doing that, boring. You'll lose 30% of your viewers. And that just confirmed what I was thinking. It's much more fun if I go and get on a train now, collect a car and drive it to the start line. That's much more fun. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm now walking to the train station. Well, I'm not. I'm walking to my three series that has got my suitcase and all my stuff in for this challenge. And then I'm driving my three series to the train station, jumping on a train to collect the new car. And when I get back, hopefully the Volvo will be fixed because I've just left it with a STP to fix it. I wish I was doing it in that Volvo though. It's so lovely. I'm still filming, just walking past the scrapyard. CRS. Let's have a look, see if they've got anything interesting in there. They have as well. Look at the little four wheel drive. See that at the back there? Hang on little four-wheel drive is that I don't know what that is in a Suzu or something then there's an MG and there's a Citroen C5 there as well that Renault looks too new to be scrapped doesn't it always have a little look as to what they've got in here just in case they're scrapping Volvos without telling me anyway this isn't going to become a tour of the scrapyard right I'll get my train it's a camper van up there as well I can't help myself I'll see stuff in the yard and then I'm like oh, I'll just pop by and see how much they want for it buying yourself more trouble but i just i can't i can't stand seeing cars wasted especially high mileage cars that have had a long hard life so let's go and uh, get the train and i'll speak to you in a minute thanks for watching